What's going on everyone? Juicebags here and welcome back to the channel. It's been just a while since I have perused over the Dungeon Defenders Awaken Builder website to check out a community build. And today we're going to take a look at one on Massacre Rifted Survival, the prom from Herbapoo. Uh, this one was posted up on May 9th and it doesn't say any stat requirements. It does say that you're going to want uh, fusion DSTs and auras. So you're going to want a fusion ensnare aura and a fusion electric aura along with your fusion DSTs. Let's hop on in and check it out. Now this, of course, is a Wave 23 start, and I will take a quick run through the stats that I'm using. Now, I'm a little bit OP for this map here. Uh, however, the build seems extremely solid, and you can really see in any level of gear, if a build works just really, really well, it's going to work on many different levels. So, starting off here with my Ensnare Aura Monk. Uh, this is my active hybrid monk, and I'm going to be using a speedy gemstone along in the build then we're gonna have some fusion gas traps now fusion gas traps were not listed as a requirement from herbapu however i have them so i might as well use them there is my fusion gas traps the mighty dst of course fusion dsts are really the center focus on just about every meta build in dungeon defenders awaken right now and this one no different and then last but not least, the Electric Aura. The Electric Auras are just super strong. Once you get Fusion Electric Auras, you will find that with any crowd control at all in the mix, they will burn out just about the majority of the enemies present on any map, uh, with the exception of like Sharken, uh, some Ogres, of course, and any of the healthier mobs. Now let's go ahead and get things started off. We're going to start off right on this section. We're going to go with an Electric Aura. I'm going to go ahead and put it right up as close to spawn there. Not all the way into it, but relatively close to spawn. And I'm going to pop down a few upgrades on it. And then drop and ensnare Aura directly on top of it. Now we do want our gas trap right here. So I'm going to put the gas trap up just a little bit in the build. And then come on over to this lane. Here we're going to rinse and repeat the exact same thing. So we're going to go with an electric aura uh, up almost all the way to the spawn line. I uh, remember once we put our buff beams in, that will overlap into the spawn. So make sure when you originally place it, you don't put it too far up. And then we're going to drop a gas trap right here as well, right up in the spawn. Now that's the only gas traps we're going to be using here. So we're going to go ahead and switch over to our buff beams. And we're going to put a uh, beam right down here, drop a couple of upgrades on it. And since I didn't get one on this side, I'm going to run back over here and drop a, another just right here to buff this area. Uh, a couple of upgrades there as well. Now we're going to go ahead and make our way over to uh, this uh, far lane here. And once again, Electric Aura, not quite in the spawn, but right kind of at the spawn line. Uh, dropping a couple of upgrades on it, and then dropping in and snare right on top. Now this lane we don't need the gas trap on, so we're just going to go right with that overclock beam, and we'll pop a couple of upgrades on it as well. And then we're going to do the exact same thing right here on this lane. So the line not quite at the spawn yet. Uh, actually, I'm getting a little overlap now because my range is a little too large, so we are going to have to go up just a touch. Uh, we'll bring that in just a little bit, a couple of upgrades, and then an ensnare our right on top of it. We will drop that overclock right behind with a couple of upgrades. Now we're ready for the DST action, and you, there's really two places you can put them. Uh, the build shows putting them right along this way, so this is the area I'm going to use for them. However, I do quite regularly put them right here as well. Now if you put them here... Uh, a striking gemstone could be beneficial if your range is a little bit lower than uh, what you think as far as hitting that far lane right over there at spawn. So we're going to go ahead and start off with two DSTs right here. We're going to hug the wall here. So we're just going to place these two DSTs so that they are kind of in line. The left side of it should be in line with the lane. So the left side should be running 
just like right over to this line right here. Now we're going to go ahead and start dropping some more. We're going to put three of them that are covering all the way to the right ledge here, which means the left side of it is going to go all the way over into that area. We're going to put three of those right directly along the wall as tight as we can get them in. That one's out just a little bit wonky, but that's all right. And then we're going to put three of them right here that are making sure to cover the spawn that is over there. So we want the left side of it to be dipping over right to that spawn door, really. So we're going to get those three in, making sure to turn them just a little bit towards that spawn. And then Herb had a uh, listed with two reflect beams right here. However, if your placement is not perfect, you're not going to be able to get all of these overclock or all these DSTs on a 5DU overclock beam. So one thing I have noticed, though, is if you need to use 6DU here on the overclock, you can get away with just one reflect beam. So if you just have one reflect beam right across this way, it's going to provide you the protection you need. However, if you do have the placement down tight and you can get that 5DU overclock beam, then that's going to free up one more DU for a reflect beam just right across the way here. You can put it kind of really wherever you want down here, as long as it's giving you some back end coverage for any of those spiders that might want to shoot at these DSTs. Now, I'm going to go ahead and throw my traps back in the deck since uh, I do have fusion gas traps. And then we're going to pop on to our hybrid monk and just go ahead and pop the rest of the mana into these DSTs right here and get the wave started. Now, it's listed as full AFK and it can be used in a group. Uh, Herb has this listed on the build planner. Now, I will put a link down to uh, his original uh, build planner entry down in the description below, so make sure you head on over there, check it out, and give it a thumbs up if you like the build. The build definitely works out pretty good for me. So I will definitely be giving this one a thumbs up, that is for sure. And uh, yeah, smooth stuff. Uh, you can't really see exactly what all is going on. So if we take advantage of looking at the attack map here, we're going to see that the majority of the enemies are getting burned out close to spawn, if not right at the spawn, shortly after the spawn. So everything is getting a beat down. These electric cars are putting in a lot of work against all the little guys. And then the DSTs, of course, are cleaning up the pack versus all of the nightmare enemies and any of the larger enemies that might be pushing through that R stack. Good stuff here, though. I would have to definitely give this one a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget, y'all, make sure to share your builds over there on the planner. If you see a build that's really good over there that you'd like to see highlighted, make sure to let me know down in the comments below and I will check it out really just blasting through the rest of this first wave. Um, nothing is pushing out even close, and we don't even have full upgrades in yet. Now, with the mana from this first wave, I should be able to get all of the overclocks upgraded all the way around the map. And then if there's any left over, I'll just dump it into some ROs or these DSTs. Since those electric ROs are putting in so much work at the spawn, I do want to get those electric ROs upgraded before the end of the match here. This one is uh, going to be a Militia chest piece as far as the fusion drops. So if you're looking to fine tune that third defense, you're going to get that Militia chest piece uh, guaranteed here as the drop in the victory chest. So uh, just about there for the end of the first wave. Uh, let's go ahead and collect up some mana. We will drop it all into getting these uh, overclock beams fully upgraded. And then any leftovers will just pump directly into the DSTs and Rs. But uh, let's go ahead and get this all collected up and we will get this map rolling. The runtime on the build is pretty good. Uh, I think I was averaging like maybe 12 minutes. Uh, we'll have to take a look and see what the time is on this particular run uh, with me commentating as well. Now it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to get all of them quite upgraded all the way. Let's see, let's go ahead and just get this one jacked up to full, and then we'll put as much as we can into this one. We can't get that last upgrade on that overclock, but we will get it next wave for sure. 
Uh, we got a couple of little bits of straggler mana laying around. We'll just snack that up and throw it right into a random DST here. And let's go ahead and jump on forward to the final wave and check it all out in action once everything is upgraded and all decked out from one more wave of mana. Alright, and here we are starting wave 25. I've got all of the overclocks upgraded all the way now. I've got all of the electric auras um, up to either four or five stars throughout the map and uh, everything's holding really, really strong. So let's go ahead and check it out and see what wave 25 brings. Um, it's pretty smooth running, y'all. Stuff just doesn't make it very far out of the spawn. Uh, a couple of enemies will make it close to being out of the spawn, but they've just got such a long way to go with the Aris still that there's just no chance anything's going to survive. So hats off to Herbapu for posting this one up. It's definitely a solid build and is working extremely well. Uh, I can see using this one as a very, very chill build. Uh, you can do that big one R stack build with a striking gem uh, in the middle of the map here on this one. And that's the build I normally use, but this build here is definitely much more chill. So uh, no reason to stress out. Everything just dies at the spawn. And you get a few straggler spiders, but all of those get picked off by the DSTs relatively quick. So smooth run and build here. Uh, definitely an A-plus on this one. Uh, the only downside on it, of course, is we're not getting any siren kills in, but on the same note, most of the time we're ignoring sirens these days anyway, so that's not really a huge deal, but you are going to miss out on just a tiny little bit of gold if you're wanting to kill those sirens versus not. Now, if you're playing this in a team, obviously the best team comp would be to have an apprentice and a monk uh, overcharge and tower boosting the DST stack, and then maybe have two other members that are on siren duty and taking out those sirens. Uh, you could actually take this reflect beam and maybe provide some team members a reflect beam over here somewhere where they can kill sirens safely uh, behind the reflect. Should be a very solid plan if you want to collect a little bit more gold out of the deal from those siren kills. As of course we know the sirens are just some serious loot pinatas. So they shower the gold at you, no doubt at all. So we're down to, uh, what, 30 mobs? Getting ready to hit single-digit mobs, and everything is burning fast. Let's take a look at the loot and see what kind of goodies we got in the box. Let's see. We got a um, guard helmet with all four builder stats. Not a fantastic helmet, but a good starter one. And sadly, the Militia chest piece rolled Transcendent without all four builder stats. So a big old boo there on that one. If you're looking to bump up that third defense into fusion gear, this is the map that you would stop at for the chest piece. Taking a look at the time of the run, 15 minutes, not too bad, uh, considering I spent the all of Wave 24 AFK. And, of course, commentating the video. That's going to add on a few extra minutes. So I think this is pretty safely around the 10 to 12 minute range on a normal run where you're just blasting through it. But that will get it for today. A community build from Herbapoo from over on the DDA Build Planner. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time around. Take it easy.